So we are back at this Worcester. Remember when I asked the question, when's it time to replace the boiler? This one had a lot of thoughts of it. Really great comments from people put in there, giving some advice, saying what they would do. So the customer's chosen to replace it. So we're going for junior out and junior being basically the 4000 is the junior. So it should be a straight swap. I'm gonna show you how to do the straight swap on this, the stuff that you're gonna need, how easy it is, and also, I'm going to have a look inside this boiler and see the exact state of that heat exchanger. So yeah, let's get to it. First thing we'll do to get the drain off on, nice and easy. We can do it from the drain off in the boiler. Then next thing you want to do is get the water off and test the gas switches over there. These are the first things I'll do as I'm doing the install. Oh, that's nice and loose. But there's also one thing you've got to do that's more important than all that. Before we turn the water off, make sure the customer's filled up the kettle. Other than that, you ain't getting a drink. I did make sure that they make coffee just over there. Absolutely lovely. So yeah, drain down, gas tested, water off. Then I could just start ripping the boiler out. Nice and simple. It's nice and simple. Just get all your connections off your jig. Disconnect the flue. That even, that's just a, on a flat roof, so that'd be nice and easy. And one thing some people forget, I've done it before, you've got to disconnect the expansion vessel. If you don't, you'll try and take that boiler off the wall and you'll, um, yeah, you will get there before. Um, yeah, this PCB is dangling, so what we're going to do as well is I'm just going to cut the wires straight across there, get the electricity disconnected, and yeah, that is ready to come out. That's the old boiler off the wall. You see there, you're left with the boiler connections, the jig, the expansion vessel. So, we're going to do now, do the nuts at the back, get that out. Just probably just cut that condensate off down here. Uh, PRV, again, we'll just undo the nut, get that out, and see how the template sits on that it should just go straight on there we go so we're left we've took the jig off it's only on two screws there's one there one there it looks like it used to be a horizontal flue i've gone vertical because you can get the clearances at the back um so yeah got all the pipe work there now what i'm going to do is put the jig on the wall it should line up with them two screws obviously i'm going to hang it on more than two screws uh but yeah just get it in place and go up on the roof get that vertical flue and see these should just go straight back in so we should be able to reuse all them and get them back in. Right, so you can see, jig's off now. What I'm going to do is get the new jig, pop it on. I am going to use a template. I'm just going to pop it on. Custom ray, cut my finger open, doing a Worcester. It always happens. But yeah, let's see how the new jig uh, lines up. Uh, bang. They screw it. I'm going to I'm gonna have to redo these. The, the fixings are absolutely short. Uh, yeah, all them. Oh, never done one of these, can you tell I'm excited? All them just line up perfect. So I'm just gonna mark the holes and just redo the um, the fixings, make sure it's all level. Be done by 11. Be done by 11, don't start till 10. No, I've got, I've got all the clean too, I've got a filter to put in and all that, so. Plenty, plenty to be getting on with. All right, that's the jig on. All the pipe work lines up absolutely perfect. Now, the nuts and olives. It's a bit of a debate for people. Do you replace them or not? Now, if they're on show, like a TRV or something, I will replace them, but it's a brass nut and a brass olive at the end of the day. It's gonna outlive me. If it fits and it works and it's the same thread, I'll leave them on. I do, unless it's on show. Because on show you want it nice and shiny, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, you can see everything is lining up just as it should be. Uh, yeah, that's ready for the board spin. You know, it's happened in the BRV. That never lines up. You know, that little red attachment that comes there, you're supposed to it on. It never lines up properly. So, I'm just going to try it without it. I am going to put, do it without it because, yeah, I'll, I'll do it after. Yeah, that board is ready to go on. But what I'm going to do first is I've got to try and get the uh, filter in here because there's obviously a stab off there to a radiator. I need it. I mean, it'd be perfect here. <laughs> Out of the way, but obviously that radiator ain't going to be protected. Any muck that comes off that radiator is going to straight to the board, so it's got to go there. So I'm just going to cut down the PRV here, get the filter in there, um, put an isolation valve on the coal somewhere, maybe here. Shock arrestor can go on here because I'm getting rid of the filling loop, putting an internal one in. Yeah, and I can angle the boiler. So you can see we've got the Worcester filter in, long scale reducer, shock arrestor, um, isolation valve for the coal the usual that I'll put on these. I was just gonna blank that off, but I'm actually gonna put a coupler 
and a drain off in there. And just make it easy. I know there's going to be one in the boiler, but why not utilize that bit of pipe that's there? Um, so yeah, I'm just going to see me hanging now. So everything has just gone on spot on perfect. Um, a little tip with these, the Worcesters, I always put a bit of paste on the fiber washers just to help them stick on there because normally if I'm going to try and hang it, they just pop off. But yeah, let's get this on. Oh, I fell over there. Right. I can't really lean on the board that you've seen there because, uh, yeah, anyway, nothing there supporting you. Come on, I'll grab these now. Can you pull the piece in? Yeah, I'll just it under there. And it's just got a hook on at the back here, up there. There we go. I'll grab it there because I'll trap my fingers. Nice one, thank you. I'm making this a lot harder than what it is. If you could lean on that board, it'd be a lot easier for cord. I'm going to end up breaking the board out. Let's straddle. Look up. On the back and yeah, on both sides, I'll show you. I don't know why, but sometimes I can throw them on the wall and straight on, but other times I can just draw like that. Yeah, too bad to hang there. There we go, that's it all on the wall, and then we're just lining up beautifully. And just, just hook just there and at the top. Yeah, you'll see, nice and easy to see. As you go down there, these the nuts on. Make sure your nuts line up. Right, so all them nuts are tight. I'll do the contact up later. So with the flute, you can see it don't line up. Don't line up. But Worcester, they've got something for that. I'll show you. So I'll put the vertical adapter in, and this is what we're going to use. A simple switch. Now if this one Worcester goes into that flue, it makes it so it makes up for that offset. See, once that's in, it'll line up perfectly. Yeah, it's a great idea from Worcester, because obviously when they redesigned it, the flue was further back. So having some, an adapter that you can use, it just makes a lot of sound. I think they're about 20 quid plus, but they're mad. So if you're doing a junior to a 4,000, make sure you add that onto the quote. Because I didn't. That's cost me 20 quid now. One of them though. So yeah, I'm just going to pop that in there, and get the flue in. Nice, it's simple, straightforward. Well, I suppose it's got to be simple since it's called a simple switch. Let's get on. Right, that is the old flu that's in there. I am going to replace it, but what I'm going to do now is just go up to the roof and see how much water I've got on show and just take it off because I can use the old flu as a reference. But yeah, that's how it works. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, it's a flu. It's quite a trick, actually. Quite a big roof this is. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see what extra we've got. So, yeah, just going to measure. What excess we got? I can take that off. New flu, old flu. Was the old flu longer? Don't know. Anyway, so it was 90 mil. So I was going to pump side by side. And yeah, we'll just take 90, 90 mil off. Uh, we'll just see what excess we got there and yeah, cut them down. Right, so I just cut the flue down, popped it down. There you go, that's it in the simple switch. Making life simple. I've got to clean that up and put the uh, flue bracket back on up there. But I just want to get it filled up so I can get the cleaner on. Uh, it's about one and a half bar now, so I'm just going to put the power on. If I wide it up right, it should all work. So yeah, I'm just going to make sure it all comes on and works. Gas has all been tested. Water's back on. Make sure it fires up, then I'll get the AD magnet lens on here. All right, now leaks. Just put some X800 in there. Magnet lens all attached. Always get paranoid one of them. We're gonna blow off. Um, but yeah, that's all open. See what the pressure's on. A bit more pressure in there. And we could do a do a system clean on this. I think that's about lunchtime. 
So the clean is the most important part of any boiling store. Any boiling store. You can fit over the thousand, which is the budget Worcester boiler, or the eight thousand, which is their best boiler. If you put the eight thousand on the dirty system, it won't last. It really won't. You just have endless problems with it. And vice versa, if you had a Worcester one thousand on a really clean system, kept the inhibitor topped up, it'd last years. I see so many breakdowns on boilers. Not so much anymore, but when I used to work at British Gas, a lot of the breakdowns were through the dirt in the system. So that very important part of a boiler install. So I'm gonna let that run, add me some food, then I'm gonna, the other boiler, I'm gonna see how bad it actually was inside, because I can't wait to get that open and have a look and show you. Because obviously the last video was asking the question, when's it time to replace your boiler? Um, customer charge replace, I was hearing on the side of replace, I also had a lot of comments off you guys, so I'll probably go through them comments and have a look at uh, this boiler wall. Yeah, that does its magic. Just a quick one as well, that's the cap that comes on the condensate. Keep it, that seal there, fits the um, condensate traps. Yeah, nice little spare to have. So yeah, shook down your box. Got about four or five of them there, so nice little spare to keep. All right, so just having a little play about this wall, um, the system please. I managed to get it all apart. Yeah, the, uh, the gasket's gone, we knew that. Electrodes, that would have been part of full strip clean. Baffle looks fine. The bottom one is completely stuck. That is absolutely ramo in there. Let me just zoom in. See so, ya. Yeah. No way else getting that out, I don't think. Um, I know there's a tool that you can get which will help them get out, but I really don't think I would've got that bottom baffle out anyway. Um, See so, ya, yeah, everything else in there now looks fine, so. Mm, I could have tried the, uh, the coke, to a can of coke in there just to try and loosen it up, but. For the age of the boiler, I think the right call's been made. I don't like scrapping boilers, I really don't, but you have got to call it time sometimes. Now, me personally, I think the right call's been made. New boiler in this system, because it was a straight swap junior to a 4000, the price is obviously lower than a normal compass swap because it is just sort of in and out. Um, 10 year warranty, get a filter on there because it hasn't already got a filter. You know, you've got no problems now for 10 years. 10 years, as long as it gets maintained, and the levels are correct, 10 years, problem free. Whereas, if I tried to repair this one, you imagine if um, the pump had gone in three months, six months, stuff like that, you know. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go through the comments at the end, some of the comments, I'll pick some out and yeah, we'll we'll talk through it. Um, but yeah, the cleaners, cleaners near enough done. I'm just gonna um, go around, agitate the radiators. Um, I've tidied everything up now. I can commission the boiler actually. Commission the boiler while it's having the last legs of the clean. Um, I've got a lot of the clean to go around for a good hour. Good hour, just getting around the system, then agitate the radiators. Um, bad me lunch, so. All right. Barely anything on them. But that's been clean and agitated. I think the system was too bad anyway, so. Yeah, cleaned, main flushed. Get the filter back on and we can commission it yeah, and that's the enough job done. Filter back on, let's get some in between there. It's going to take two lots more looks of it. I think I've filled that one, it's going to spill. Yeah, clean that up, but there we go. Just got to jump a car towel down. Yeah, uh, still have, I'd say about a quarter of that left, so I'll let that circulate then I'll put the rest in. Right, on this system we've only got like eight radiators, so it don't need the full, um, it don't need full clear what's in it, so what we're going to do is just turn the heat and output down, and we're going to turn that right down, so don't need much, don't need about 12 kilowatts, so 50%, that's the lowest you can go on that, so, yep, make sure you, you set your heating, you don't need to be full pelt on a lot of systems, so make sure you set that. Very easy to get into, so you just pressing all them buttons in, that gets into service menu. Right, there we go, that is the job done. Um, new filter, shock of us, uh, lime scale drifter, all the usuals. Nice and simple, nice and simple with that little um, simple switch that Worcester bought out. Now, I did notice these marks above the ceiling, if you have noticed them, it was leaking before customers said they've had it done, so hopefully I ain't disturbed the seal on the vertical. And for all you eagle eyes, yes, the contact does go through. The wall in 21.5 is going to be upgraded, um, but there's, there's a 
brambles all up to my head up there. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, look, well, if you can get them moved, I'll come back and um, get it upgraded. Very lot I can do at the moment. Um, this one was a bit of a, a brush that um, I think I only come here last week and I'll go it in the week after. So that, that is a bit of a rush for me to get a boiler in. But yeah, um, let's have a look at some of your comments and go through them and uh, see what was said. So let's take a look at some of your comments now. I really appreciate everybody that comments. I do apologise, text me a little while or I don't respond sometimes. Sometimes I get like 100 comments on a video, so it is a little bit time soon. But I do try and get back to you all. I really do. Um, I really like the discussion this started as well. Because um, you had six and one, half a dozen of the other. Let's start with Stephen now. Stephen says he'd like to repair the boiler. You know, it's going to cost about three, maybe four hundred pounds to repair that boiler. And we am in a throw. I do agree. We am in a throwaway society. We really am. And it isn't just boilers. If you get a household appliance that goes, first thing is aim for the new one. It's not like what can we do to fix it? So we do waste a lot as a society over everything. It's not just boilers. Well, I think boilers do get ripped out sometimes before they should do. So yes, repairing boilers is great, but you have got to put that onus on the customer. All you can do is give their professional opinion. But like Stephen's comment, it really, you know, opened up my eyes to like, yeah, we am in a faraway society. So I did agree with him. It was cheap as well, like 10% of the cost. But as you've seen, the customer did choose the new boiler. And Mr. Harry, he commented as well. Now, I like his thought process on this. It seems like he has like a cut off. So if the cost goes above a thousand pounds, like, no, that's the new boiler. And also looks at the general condition. Because if the cost is like two, three hundred pounds, but the condition of the boiler is horrendous, there's no point going any further. As you see with our Worcester, the case and stuff like that, there's no signs of rotting or anything or corrosion, nothing like that. But I do like how he's put, like, right, if it costs over this, then it's going to be a new boiler. But as I said as well in the comment, it does rely on a certain number of factors. Age of the boiler, the make of the boiler. I mean, you're not going to spend that kind of money on a Vicara or a heat line on you. But Worcester's, Valence, Boilers like that, Baxi's, you know, them well made boilers. So it is worth spending the money sometimes, but you do have to have that that limit. Now, Mark's comment said, You do have to think about your reputation. Very, very good point. Now, you can advise the customer saying, Yes, I can fix this, I can get the parts, we'll get it up and running. But as he says in the comment, if it goes again within three months and the customer finds you up and you say to him, It needs, I don't know, say if that needed a right hand block. And it's another three four hundred pound. Then think to yourself, well, I've just paid you four hundred pound. It's another three four hundred pound. They mean they mean for a penny and for a pound on that boiler now, aren't they? And they're going to think to themselves, well, he should have told me to replace it. So you, yeah, you have got to think about your reputation sometimes. So I think that was a great comment, great shout, Mark. And another one here from Manic. Now Manic says, surely the cost of replace is worth replacing the boiler. It says there about the fan PCB getting it on its own now. Is that a Worcester approved part though? That is my only issue with fitting them fan PCBs. Can you get it direct from Worcester? Do Worcester sell that on their own? Because what I can find on the internet is refurbishments or companies that actually make this part themselves or something like that. So I would imagine they get a lot of fans to take the PCBs out, recondition them and sell them on. If a fault went wrong with that, like worst case scenario, or well, it's probably one in a million, but say if one of them set on fire, who's responsible then? Because we're still going to say, well, that's not a genuine part. We do not sell that part on its own. That's the only issue I've got with fan PCBs. But yes, they am cheaper. The full strip McLean with the electrodes. New fan PCB, it would have brought the cost down. It might have got the, the customer another year or two. So I do appreciate the the cost savings were there. But as you've seen from some of the comments, there's a lot, a lot to weigh up when it comes to advising on a new boiler. You have just got to give your customer all the options and your professional opinion. You know, say, so I'll just put that in their court. I said, I really don't mind either option. More than that, but actually I said to them, I'm happier repairing this boiler than I am replacing it. I said, but you've got to think of what you want. Now, I did ask them as well, how long do you plan on staying in this property? And they said, we are not moving. This is for our forever home. So if I'm staying there longer than five, 10 years, you know, I know when saying I said it before, it's a throwaway society, but you get the warranty with the boiler. It's just hassle. They've got hassle-free now, five to ten years. My instance was ten years, but 
if you put a budget, even if you put a budget board in, it's five years warranty. They haven't got no hassle. Now, I did do an ideal. It was probably about 12, 13 years old. That property was being sold. And they spent like, I think it was £500 repairing the boiler. Getting it back up to scratch, basically. So it's full strip of clean. New sump, new burner, you know, the works. And that's the one that I got quite a bit few comments on. It wasn't on on here on YouTube. It was over on TikTok. I got a lot of comments saying, why am you replacing? Why am you repairing that boiler? It's for the bin. It's for the pin. It depends on circumstances. So when is the best time to replace your boiler? I don't know. <laughs> After all that, I don't know. The only advice I can give is give your customer the options and your own professional opinion. Try and keep the bias out of it because if you start thinking about money and thinking, oh, I can make some money off this boiler, don't think like that. I don't like tradesmen to think like that, thinking, where's the money at? Where's the money at? I don't, I know I start saying, well, but I don't do this job for the money, to be honest with you. I enjoy my job. Now, I'm going to spend most of my life working. You spend eight hours sleeping, eight hours at work, and you get eight hours to yourself. Work is a third of your life. So you've got to enjoy what you do, and I'm a very lucky person that I enjoy what I do. So I don't go chasing the money. I do like giving customers the options and respecting their opinions and what they want to do. So best advice to give, just give your professional opinion and give the customer all the options. I said, I've really enjoyed that this has led on to a broader conversation and some more questions, I really do. You know, probably a lot of people might have tuned out by now because it has been a lot of talking by me, this one has. But I have enjoyed doing this one. It's something different, something I might look at doing in the future maybe, maybe discussing some subjects, taking your comments on board, reading through them, then pulling them back on here. So actually, it's like a bit of communication between us because at the moment, I'll just post the video, then I'll reply on comments. But doing this, I've actually really enjoyed it. So if you want to see a little bit more of this style of content, let me know. And if you got this far, and you're an avid fan as well, the share a tray. Stay tuned. That job is booked in for four days' time. Uh, it has been an absolute nightmare. I even started the job yet. I've not even started the job and it's been a nightmare. But yeah, I'm going to record that and get it started on Monday. At the moment, it's Wednesday. I'm going to get that started on Monday. So I will give you an update on that. Again, apologies for all the talking. Really appreciate your support, though. Catch you on the next one.